Hello and welcome to All You Wanted to Know About Moose Antlers. We have gotten a lot of questions regarding antlers. They are a unique structure, unique among all the animals on the planet. Antlers, unlike horns, are grown and shed every year. Every year, a male moose, deer, elk, or caribou will grow an entire new set of antlers just to shed them at the end of the mating season and start all over again the next year. In early spring, the antlers start the same way regardless of the age of the animal, as tiny nubs poking up from their skull. It's hard to conceive that these antlers right here all started that same spring as little tiny nubs. I know, that's why they're amazing. So what are antlers for anyway? Well, first of all, they attract the girls, cows, and for fighting. What's the difference between an antler and a horn? Well, that's a good question. Horns are based on bone, but are covered in a layer of keratin. The animals never shed horns. The females also have horns in a lot of these species. An exception to that is the pronghorn antelope. Their horn is based on a bony structure. It is covered in keratin, but they shed their keratin layer every year. This is a diagram of the various parts of the antlers I may be discussing. From the pedicle, to the beam, to the brow tines, to the royal tines, there are subroyal tines, you get the idea. Anyway, here it is. If you want to pause on it, go for it. But there won't be any quizzes, so don't worry about that. There are two different structures of antlers. One is cervina. They are thin, like elk, single tines. The other is palmated, which is to say, the kind with a shovel, the paddle. Little bull calves have flat pads above their eyes. Those are the start of the pedicles. These are twin three-month-old bull calves. You can see those little pads above their eyes, where their antlers will eventually grow. Not this year, but next year they'll look like this. And like I said, they all start the same way, as little tiny nubs, regardless of the age of the animal. As the animal grows, every year, their set of antlers will get bigger. And here's a fun little fact. Antlers are the fastest growing tissue in any mammal. They can grow an inch a day and up to a pound of bone a day. Antlers get their nourishment from the outside. That soft velvety skin there, it's actually called velvet, is what nourishes the bone as it grows. The bone does not have marrow so it has to grow from the outside. And what determines the rate of growth, or the quality of growth, is the nutrition the animal gets. Also, genetics, hormone levels, and the overall health of the animal. Here you can see the outline of the blood vessels. They're there in the velvet, running along the inside of the paddle. Given that there are nerves in this velvet, the antlers are very sensitive. If a bull were to knock his antlers into something and damage the velvet, it would damage the growth of the bone, and therefore the antler would be malformed for that year. In the spring and summer, moose spend a lot of time in the water. Why? Because that's where they get their nutrition. All moose, cows and bulls alike, need to replace what winter took away from them. Winters take a lot out of the moose. They need to replace sodium, calcium, phosphorus, and other minerals that get depleted through the harsh winters. Aquatic plants fit the bill. They're very dense in these minerals, and they're much more easy to break down than land-based plants. Moose can actually submerge and dive up to almost 20 feet deep. So now let's move to August. This is when the velvet gets shed, or raked off. Nature's on a tight schedule. 
this is toward the end of August, all bulls, if they are healthy, will start to shed their velvet. I know, it looks pretty ghoulish, but don't worry, nobody's hurting here, it's all normal. Hormones dictate that the blood vessels shut down, the nerve endings wither away, and basically, the velvet dies. We suspect, although it's never been proven, because we can't ask them, that it must itch, because they rake it against bushes and trees to rid themselves of it. In as little as just a couple of days, a bull moose can rid himself of all of his velvet. Here are some examples of some, let's just say, odd antler growths. This is Little Shred. And his buddy Spunky. And that's not a brow tine on this young bull. That's just an extra spike. This is what happens when a bull knocks a growing antler. I'm sure this poor guy will be very glad to shed that antler. It's almost in his eye. He can't see what's in front of him like that. This bull has a fish hook for a left antler. And then the next year, he grew the same thing only bigger. This bull has an odd pedicle on the right side. His antlers are kind of funny too. He doesn't really have brow tines. They're off to the side. This bull has two kickers, one on the back side of each of his paddles. Also here you can see the channels that the blood vessels leave after the velvet's gone. That's imprinted into the bone. His antlers are colored this way because of the vegetation he's been raking on. And of course there's mismatch. See how his right pedicle is different than his left? He happens to have a stubborn strand of velvet hanging near his right eye. There's an antler deformity called peruke or peruke head. Because it kind of resembles the wigs that the men wore in the 18th century. It may be fashionable to the men, but it doesn't look good on a moose. And then there are just the big antlers, the impressive antlers. That's all I've got. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions? Write them in the comments. I'll get to them. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.